Welcome to the RBH Management Training Series. Today's presentation deals with issues related to companies preparing for job loss or a reduction in force. This is part one of two and is about 25 minutes long. We have with us today Gary Barnes. Mr. Barnes is the Senior Clinical Manager and Organizational Workplace Consultant at Reliant Behavioral Health. He has been helping organizations develop a more efficient workforce for nearly 20 years. For more information on RBH, please visit us at www.myrbh.com. Hello everyone. Welcome to this webinar on preparing for job losses or reduction in force. I'm Gary Barnes and I'm here to uh, talk to you uh, about a, a really tough topic uh, and I'm sure your interest in it is, is based on uh, issues that you're having in your own organization. Uh, I've geared this for kind of what I call the frontline folks, uh, supervisors, managers, even HR people who are telling people they're losing their jobs, who are dealing with uh, people after they've been told they've lost their jobs. Uh, and you may be in on making the decisions about who lost their job, but this is really about how to deal with the human factor once decisions have been made. So the main issue is that emotion is very high for everyone involved. I use this formula to convey the amount of anxiety and fear that people feel. Uh, it's like a mathematical formula. The amount of uncertainty times the amount of importance equals the amount of anxiety. So you can imagine that people's jobs are generally pretty important to them in that they represent uh, security, uh, a sense of well-being, uh, an identity, uh, their source of relationships, structure, uh, many, many other things. So obviously people's jobs are important and there's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, the re the uh, degree to which you can reduce either one of those factors is going to help people feel less anxious. Uh, also, because of the anxiety, you will have a lot of repeated questions and thirst for specifics from people, and you probably will have to deal with that. Also, the other emotion you'll see a lot of is anger, uh, because there's a general sense of unfairness among a lot of people that this is happening to them especially when people have been loyal to your organization, done good work, and they still find themselves uh, losing their jobs. Uh, and anger gets spurned when people are feeling out of control and powerless. And anger is an emotion that can help people regain control. There's a huge amount of discomfort for you. Uh, uh, for any leader uh, having, to, having to work with employees who have lost their jobs. A uh, huge amount of discomfort that I've divided in three. It's unpleasant because it's not what drew you to your job and it's dealing with a lot of emotions. It's uncertain for you because you don't really know what you're doing, most of you. Uh, hopefully you don't ever get good at doing this. Uh, and it's not what you were trained to do. I don't know how many of us were trained in our profession to uh, do reductions in force. Probably not very many of us. And then it's unpredictable. How are people going to react? What's the next thing that's going to happen? And you are stressed. Uh, most of you probably feel a huge burden of responsibility for taking care of your staff, for taking care of this in a way that makes it go okay. You may not be sleeping. You're probably working extra hours. You're probably going to feel guilty no matter what you do uh, because bad things are happening to good people. Uh, and, maybe, and, and you may be the recipient of people's frustration, anger, and fear, especially if you're on the front line. So you're working a lot of hours. Uh, pouring your heart and soul into this and probably not getting a lot of gratitude back from uh, the people that you're dealing with. Instead, you may be getting more questions 
and more of their emotion. So some of the guiding principles, uh, and I think this is a helpful way to, th to think about dealing with job loss, is the overall principles that you want to address because the specifics will vary and again you don't always know what you're doing. So one of the guiding principles is to over communicate. This means uh, you want to give accurate timely information over and over again. Don't hold anything back that you really don't have to hold back. Um, communication could be in newsletters, in face-to-face, uh, -face, in meetings, uh, answering the same question over and over again, uh, and we'll get into that a little bit more uh, a few slides down down the presentation here. Uh, and it's likely to be your main job for weeks or months or, or even longer. Secondly, a guiding principle is to be human, and by that I mean uh, you have to be willing to be vulnerable um, and recognize that this is one of those uh, uh, moments where it's humans dealing with other humans and there's a lot of emotion, compassion's required. Uh, it's not going to be clean, it's going to be sloppy uh, and, and that's the way it is. Admitting you don't know what to do, things like that. Uh, Short-term plans and using mileposts uh, as a concept to guide you is another guiding principle. Uh, so while uh, you do want to give hope for the future and if you can have a plan well into the future, you want to try to help people think more in the short term because that's the part that we have the most control over. And if you go back to my last slide about the anxiety formula, people feel better when they ha feel like they have more control. Managing your own emotions is a great guiding principle because you're going to have a lot of emotion and uh, the degree to which you're able to think logically and solve problems effectively relies on you to be able to keep your emotions in check uh, as much as you can. And then making a self-care plan for, your, for you uh, is a guiding principle. You'll uh, maybe be laughing at this right now, uh, especially with some of the other things I've already laid out about how much time you have to work and, uh, and how much responsibility you feel. But I'd be remiss if I didn't have it on the list uh, as something that you should be thinking about. So one overarching way to think about this is that the way that you are with the most vulnerable people is going to be the truest reflection of your character. That means that others will notice in your organization how you, and I don't mean you individually necessarily, I mean you, the leaders of your organization, the way you deal with people who are losing their jobs now will be the most single most important thing in how survivors, the people who aren't losing their jobs, feel about you and feel about the organization. You can give lip service to survivors. You can tell them you're going to treat them well and be loyal to them. But they're really looking at how you treated the last guys that just lost their job. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm going to take uh, the various issues that you're likely to deal with and give you some ideas about how to deal with each of these issues. So let's start with how you prepare for layoff announcements because uh, aiming before you fire is always a good idea. Um, gather all the information you can now. Some of you may have all the information uh, about uh, why the layoffs were necessary, the financial data about your organization, that kind of thing, but some of you won't. Um, know who you'll call with more questions, so have those phone numbers uh, and email addresses available. Be prepared to sell the problem to staff. This is uh, comes from uh, William Bridges' work uh, where he advocates selling the problem rather than selling the solution. So in the case of a layoff, selling the problem means what's the problem that we're trying to solve by having this layoff? So you want to be as transparent as you can about the financial data, the financial realities, 
uh, or the uh, slowed or uh, eliminated work processes that are no longer necessary because of the slowed economy. And people logically begin to grasp then why this is necessary. They still may have trouble making the leap to why it's necessary that they had to lose their job, but at least they begin to understand uh, why you're making the decisions that you have to make. In other words, the solution should sell itself if you sell the problem. Uh, and then you want to plan to meet with everyone and you want to plan how you're going to do that. So you're going to have group or individual meetings, uh, are you going to prepare them in some way for what you're about to announce? Uh, is it going to be in writing? Um, that kind of thing. Uh, in general, individual meetings are uh, important for uh, managing emotions and uh, showing respect for individuals who might be losing their jobs. Group meetings are the best for rumor control and uh, making sure that everyone gets the same information because then people will ask questions and everyone will hear the questions and the answers. I got more ideas for you on preparing for layoffs. Prepare yourself for a long process uh, and the, so you know uh, the, the way I like to say it is it's not like a uh, uh, a 5K, for those of you who run or know what a 5K is, uh, 3.1 miles, I believe. It's more like a marathon. Uh, so you don't want to start off sprinting. Um, you want to take care of yourself. Uh, you know, uh, think about the next thing that you have to do, uh, not be so focused on the end. At the same time, you want to prioritize short term planning and try to return yourself and others to what the next thing is, even though you know it's a long process. Make sure you can plan for everyone to know. Uh, remember that uh, uh, once you tell one person a fact or a piece of information, from that point on you begin to lose control over how that information gets communicated. So communicating as rapidly as you can the information that you want to get out probably makes sense so that you have control over what's said and how it's said. And of course you want to make sure the support resources are in place and available. This includes uh, if, if you're in a community where uh, a community agency is offered to come in and uh, offer uh, a financial workshop or our EAP offers that as well uh, or uh, job search skill assistance, uh, those kind of things. If you have resources, line those up. And of course, have a stack of EAP cards and a flyers available uh, so that people know where they can come for the variety of assistance they can get through their EAP. Prepare yourself psychologically. Uh, remember the difference between change and transition. And I'm going to give you a little bit of information about that. This comes from William Bridges, who wrote a book called Transitions, I believe, first in 1980, and went on to be a uh, pretty famous corporate consultant, helping organizations with layoffs and uh, downsizing and other kinds of mergers and acquisitions. Uh, and his very simple idea is that change and transition are two different things. Uh, change is the external, uh, transition is the internal. So change is what happens on the outside. In this case, people are losing their jobs. There's going to be fewer people to do the work that's required. Uh, but inside uh, is the transition. And the inside transition takes longer and goes through phases and will go on for a longer period of time. Think of it like taking one bite of the apple at a time. Uh, that's sort of the way we're uh, programmed so that as humans we deal with uh, our emotions about things uh, not, exact, not cleanly in stages but a little bit at a time as we work through, through our own internal process. So transition is the challenge. That's why there's so much emotion and, uh, uh, and, and uh, 
uncertainty. So change is the shift in the external, transition is the internal. Here's the transition cycle. Bridges says there are three general phases, endings, neutral zone, and new beginnings. So uh, one of the ways that he was just really clever, and I think, uh, I don't think anybody has, has uh, made it any clearer since he said it. Uh, transition always starts with endings. So the first thing when people lose their jobs or get relocated is they're going to feel grief and loss. So you can expect grief and loss. People get married, people win the lottery, uh, they still will go through an ending before they really move on. Now granted those endings are going to be tinged with uh, elation about good things happening, um, but people get surprised when good things are happening as to why they feel sadness inside. In this case, I don't think we're surprised that people feel sadness. They have to go through the grief and loss process. It's almost immediately followed by this neutral zone idea, the land of ambiguity uh, where things are up in the air. It's a time of danger and opportunity mixed. And then finally, new beginnings when people start to feel comfortable with new rituals and roles and routines and relationships. So then this, the, the uh, uh, task of the leader is to acknowledge the losses when people are finding out about losing their jobs. And here are just some of the potential psychological losses. Uh, security turf refers to uh, their immediate surroundings, not having the place to go to, their desk, their phone, their computer. A lot of organizations will provide a workspace for people when they're transitioning into trying to find another job. That can make a big difference. Okay, so some of the dangers that we'll face uh, when dealing with layoffs. The fundamental attribution error you might be interested in is this idea that uh, all of us have to some extent or another uh, where I look at you and your behavior differently than I look at my own. So if you do something bad or do something to hurt me, then in my head I say, you must be a bad person with bad intentions. Whereas if I do something bad, uh, I attribute it to uh, being tired or stressed or making mistakes. So for you, if you do something bad, it's, it must be intentional and it's your character. The opposite is also true. Uh, if you do something good, uh, I'm less likely to attribute that to your essential goodness. And if I do something good, I'm more likely to attribute that to you know me being a good person. So how does that apply here? If you have to tell people that they're losing their jobs, they may uh, use you as a target of their anger and frustration and believe that you have some bad intent even though in your heart you know that you don't and in fact probably quite the opposite. Another danger is that people get stuck in rumors and speculation and blame. We can prevent that to some extent by the, uh, making sure we over communicate. Uh, failure to acknowledge losses uh, and this can be hard, a hard one because you are already working hard and have a lot on your plate, but people need time to grieve and just saying, I understand, and uh, I understand that you're going to feel X, Y, and Z. Um, that can go a long way. So trying to tell people they need to get over it uh, isn't going to work and is likely to make things way worse. Uh, also minimizing the accomplishments and successes uh, uh, that you've made and that others have made, uh, particularly people who have laid off, really trying to uh, help them to see that they've, uh, they have done a lot and even being specific about what that is. So uh, more ideas for preparing psychologically. Expect a wide variety of emotions that are normal for, for each person. Uh, everybody reacts differently to these kinds of things from 
little emotion all the way up to hysteria. Uh, know your own strengths and how to use them. Some of you are more intuitive and uh, empathic, uh, and some of you are more rational and logical. The empathic, uh, uh, emotional ones of you uh, can use that strength to relate to people, um, but if you're not that way, trying to be that way may make you look disingenuous. Maybe if you're more uh, of a logical, rational kind of person, maybe the way you help people is actually doing things that will make their transition easier. Uh, lining things up, being better organized, helping them organize, those kind of things. And staying human, you see this again, being willing to be vulnerable and being okay with making mistakes and feeling awkward. There's no way to feel good about telling somebody that they're going to lose their job. In some industries, people are more used to this than in others, uh, but it never feels good. And then make plans for your own support. How do you stay emotionally available and accessible and keep some personal boundaries? I think that's a quandary that a lot of people face in this situation. I can't really answer it, uh, but I can ask it, and I can ask you to think about it, because both are important. Staying emotionally available and accessible for all of your staff while keeping some personal boundaries at the same time. If you don't keep some boundaries, um, you're going to dissolve into a puddle and you're not going to be of any use to anyone. How do I provide support after layoffs are announced? Here are some ideas. Be straightforward. Tell them what is changing, what is not changing, what you know and where answers might be for other questions, and what resources are available. Pretty straightforward here. Uh, you know, don't try to say the clever thing that's going to make them feel better. Like, um, well, I'm sure God has a has a plan for you, or or uh, you know, anything anything with the word God in it is probably an inappropriate thing to say, unless you're in an organization that where that is uh, more acceptable. But people don't want you. Um, uh, thrusting your beliefs on them or pushing them too far, too fast to see that something good may come out of this. I believe that for many, many people something good will come out of this and I want you to believe that too. But now is not the time to be telling them that. Okay, uh, more ideas for how to talk to people? Tangible assistance. All those things we talked about, about having financial resources available, uh, job search skills, uh, resume writing, um, the EAP uh, can make a big difference. Let people know you care uh, in the variety of ways that you do and be clear that decisions weren't made based on performance. I hope not. Sometimes these decisions were made based on performance, in which case ignore that. Um, but it, it is better in general when you're announcing layoffs to be able to say that decisions were made based on the problems we were trying to solve financially rather than based on your performance. If they were based on performance, you should let them go for performance reasons. Allow people to express their feelings without you feeling the need to give an explanation or rebuttal. And the men in my audience, uh, you know who you are, uh, have a much greater likelihood to want to try to explain or rebut uh, than, than women, on average. That doesn't mean that that's universally true. Give hope if you can, um, and I hope that you can give hope. Uh, hope can include, you know, well, when the economy rebounds, maybe we'll be hiring again. Um, you know, I hope that uh, there's uh, other opportunities out there for you, things like that. Okay, here's another issue. All staff are anxious, especially survivors. Uh, interestingly, that survivors are often more anxious than the people, than the, the actual quote-unquote victims, the people losing their jobs. Here are a few ideas. Uh, the over-communication 
idea, as I said, is a great way to help people who are anxious. They're thirsty for knowledge. Providing temporary structures. Uh, these are short timelines and just helping people get through uh, the short term. You know, this is what we know this week, um, and uh, this is where what we're going to be doing this week. And next week we'll give you more information, something like that. Helping people stay in the present to the extent possible, um, and being wary of promises or guarantees.